Good day, students. We are going to continue from where we stopped on variation. Today, we're looking at types of variation. So we have two major types of variation, and the first is morphological variation. Morphological variation, and the second is physiological variation. So let's have that physiological variation. So what is morphological? Morphology means the structure, while physiology means the function. So how do we define both in terms of morphology, structure, and physiology, the function? So we say morphological variation is a type of variation that is expressed in the physical appearance, that is the morphology, in the shape or the physical appearance of an individual. Again, morphological variation is a type of variation that is expressed in the physical appearance of an individual. So we have more for logical variation. A variation expressed, a variation expressed, expressed. in the appearance or we say in the physical appearance of an organism so the key word is the appearance or the physical appearance so for example you look at an organism two organisms you see how those two organisms of same species differ from one another by mere looking at them and that is what we mean by morphological variation. So let's give example. For example, we have the height of an individual. When you see someone, you can say this person is tall or the person is short. Or if you have a tall person and a short person, you can see they vary. However, you are able to see that variation in their physical appearance. For example, you have the weight. Mere looking at someone's fingerprints, you can easily say that this person has this type of fingerprint and this person has the other type of fingerprint. So we say the finger, the fingerprint. What about color? We have the color of the eye and color of the skin. So both colors, when you look at someone, in their physical appearance, you can be able to differentiate between their colors. So we say the color of eye and the color of the color of skin. So we have etc. Now let's go to the second type of variation. That is the one that is expressed in the function performed by an individual. So let's define it. We have a physiological variation. So we say a variation, okay, expressed in their physiology, which is the function. Mere looking at an organism, you cannot, or two organisms, you cannot be able to differentiate between these organisms in terms of the traits of the physiological variation because it is only when two of them or three of them perform that function for you, that is when you can say this person varies from this particular person. So what do we mean? We have examples, we have the blood group, it's only when we go to the laboratory to test for their blood group. That is when we say that this person has the blood group A or this person has the blood group B. You can never see it in their physical appearance. Another one is we have the hemoglobin, hemoglobin genotype or hemoglobin traits. 
Hemoglobin genotype. Okay, it is it is in the physical in its, its it is in the function that the organism is able to perform. Another one is we have um, testing of testing of PTC. PTC is phenyl theocarbamide. We have phenyl theocarbamide. And phenylthiocarbamide is a chemical in the laboratory which tastes bitter. Which tastes bitter. If I look at your tongue, I cannot be able to say that you can taste that phenylthiocarbamide or you cannot taste it until you perform the function for me. And that is what we mean by physiological duration. It's a variation that is expressed in the function that is performed by an organism. Now, either you have morphological or physiological, they can be continuous variation or discontinuous variation. So let's look at what we mean by continuous variation. So let's say, okay, let's define continuous variation first. So it is the variation that is ex that has a gradation or a transition between extremes of a character. Again, it's a variation that has a gradation. Gradation means it's coming from simple, a little, and another one coming up, coming up. It has a lot of chances between the lowest and the highest. The lowest and the highest is what we mean by the extremes of a particular character. So we say continuous variation is a variation in which there is gradation that is coming gradually or there is transition between two extremes. Of a of a character. So the key word, you don't need to stress yourself. The key word here is gradation and transition. For example, you have height. Height can occur at different range. That is, you can have the shortest here, you can have the tallest here. In between the shortest and the tallest, okay. You can have a lot of height. So here is what we mean by gradation or transition. So another one is weight. You can have the range of different weights. Are you there? Another one is the skin, the skin color. You can have different ranges of the skin color. So this is what we mean by the continuous variation. Now let's go to the last one, which is discontinuous variation. So from the word discontinuous, we say it is the type of variation in which, just say there is no gradation or transition between two extremes, then you get the definition. So let's go right by saying we have this con continuous variation, no gradation between two extremes. Perfect. For example, you have the blood group. You know that we have how many types of blood group, everybody? We have four types of blood group. It's either you have blood group A, blood group AB, blood group O, or blood group B. There is no blood group A, small, A, A, small, small, or big, big, big. We now have a lot of transition. We only have four. There is no gradation. Another one is the finger. Another one is the finger. Print. We have just four major types of fingerprints. We have 
the compound, we have the loop, we have the arch, and we have the wall. We're going to get there in the next class. So also we have testing of PTC. We have just two combinations of testing of PTC. Just two. It's either you can taste PTC or you cannot taste PTC. There is nothing like I can taste it a little. The other person will come and say I can taste it a little, a little, a little. No. It's just only two combinations. That is why we say there is no gradation now. No gradation. Okay, so another one is the eye, the eye, the eye color. Now, the last note is that whether a variation is morphological or physiological, it can be continuous or discontinuous. And that is what we're going to use to end our class today. So we say, So a physiological variation can be continuous or discontinuous. While, so let's have one here, why a morphological variation can be continuous or discontinuous. So let's start with physiological that is continuous. Okay, do we have examples? No, we don't have examples. Let's look at physiological that is discontinuous. What is performed is expressed in a function performed by an individual. For example, we have um, testing of PTC. Let's write PTC testing, we have the blood group, we have the blood group, okay, so it is physiological and it is discontinuous, it does not have extremes. Now let's look at morphological that is continuous, we have the height, we have the height, we have the weight, okay, we have the skin color. We have different ranges of skin color. What about the morphological that is discontinuous? Yes, we have the fingerprint is morphological, but we have just four types. Then we have the eye color is morphological, and we have just three eye colors. We have the blue, we have the black, and we have the brown. Thank you for enjoying this class. We are going to talk about the application of variation in the next class. Goodbye.